Hi, Shemo Polot here. Welcome back to the channel. So, I'm so excited about this video. This week I show you um, eight websites that you absolutely need to know that I'm betting you haven't heard of. If you have, then good on you. If you haven't, then this is a video for you. So stick around and let's get into it. Eight fantastic websites. Now, let's do it. Okay, so the first website that I want to show you is called Whiteboard. That's Whiteboard without the H in white and whiteboard is just a blank page for you to write a bunch of stuff i would use this if you're in a meeting and you're sharing your screen and you want to create some sort of illustration and so what you would do is you come here and uh, if you type l then you go to line and it allows you to draw a straight line like that and so you can draw an arrow and then if you type p for pencil then you can come and you can draw a circle or something like it right and if you do it well Right, if you do the pencil thing well, if it, if it actually believes that you're trying to draw a circle, it might help you perfect the circle like that. And then you can click the eraser and you can erase whatever you want and stuff like that. And then if you want, you can share the stuff. If you sign up, you can save all your illustrations, but I wouldn't even worry about all that mess. I usually just use it just on the fly in a presentation, open up the page and then just demonstrate whatever I want. So whiteboard.com, pretty cool, uh, you should check it out. The second website that I want to show you is similar to whiteboard, um, but this one is called blank.page. And blank.page is just, yes, it's a blank page. And uh, sometimes you're in a meeting, uh, you're somewhere on the fly, you have your laptop, you, you want to write something down and maybe you don't have a piece of paper and a pen and things like that. Blank.page is really cool because you can just type a bunch of stuff that you want and it doesn't have any fancy formatting stuff, no bold, no underlining, none of that stuff. It's just type something really quickly that you want to remember and save it for later. Um, I use it a lot for YouTube stuff. Uh, when I need to write something down, when I get an idea, something like that, before I transfer the idea to my task manager. So you should also check that out. Really cool place. The third website that I want to talk about is called blush.design. And blush.design is a really cool website where you can get a bunch of illustrations that you could use in your PowerPoint presentations or that you could put on your website. And uh, let me show you, it has some really cool stuff, okay? So if you type blush.design in your browser and you go up to illustrations, um, so it has a bunch of different categories, okay? And so let me just pick uh, education, okay? So now some of them, if you see the pro feature tagged on some of the pictures, it usually means they are not free, um, but for the most part, you can find a bunch of free versions in there. Okay, let me see which one to pick. Which one to pick, which one to pick. Uh, maybe let me go inside uh, work. Okay, so then I pick this design. So if you, if you find the design that you like, you can click edit. And now when you go to edit, you can change a bunch of the features inside this illustration, okay? So if, for example, if I click the guy, or the lady or the guy, you can change the color of their pants by just clicking on the different pants the options that they give you, like that. You can even go and change, as you can see, you can change the hair. You can change, you can go inside, uh, you can change the color of the skin, you can make him darker, right? So there are all these different features. You can even go out, you can change the, the dog to a cat on the mat, you can change the color of the mat from this color to that color. You can change what appears on the desk, on the desk to from the lamp to a, a bowl of popcorn or a mug. The options are endless. And if you find a free image, then really that's all you need. So check out blush.design. It's fantastic if you want to create illustrations for your PowerPoint presentations or for your website and things like that. The fourth site that I want to tell you about is called thenounproject.com. And the noun project is just a site where you can find a bunch of icons, okay? So you could use icons to put them in your word processing tools or to put them again in presentations or if you want to create stuff for Canva because sometimes you use Canva and a bunch of the icons that you want in Canva are pros and so you can't access them because you're not using the paid version. That's where sites like thenounproject.com come in that allow you to download a bunch of icons that you can then put inside Canva. So you do have to know that in order to download the icons for free, you do have to attribute the artist. So for example, in a PowerPoint presentation, you have to add like a footnote saying this icon was created by this person just because you should give credit to people for doing their work. But as long as you're going to give credit, then you can use a basic download and you can download 
the icon for free. An alternative to the Noun Project, there are a bunch of different websites in this space. Again, there's so many websites, I'm just like so excited. Um, an alternative to the Noun Project is called Flat Icon, and so Flat Icon does something similar, though it tends to have a lot more things in color, if you're into that sort of thing. So if, for example, I type Chrome, and then I get all these different features for Chrome, different uh, icons for Chrome, and so you can just pick one, and again, you could put it in a Canva presentation, or in a PowerPoint presentation, or really wherever you want to put it. The fifth site that I want to talk to you about is called card.com. That's card.co. Card That's card with two R's, C-A-R-R-D dot C-O. And that is a site which can allow you to sort of build a landing page for all your different links. If you're like me and you have a bunch of different platforms that people can reach you, maybe your Twitter, your YouTube, your Facebook, your Instagram, your website, your blog, and things like that. So you just come to card.co and you just select a demo that you like and uh, let's maybe later, let me click that away. Oh, that, that's a pro, let me click, click this one. So you have to make sure you don't choose the paid for ones which are labeled pro. Uh, but once you come there, so now here you can add a bunch of different features. You can just upload your image and then you sort of fill it out that way by adding different boxes like this. You'd add your Twitter there, your YouTube there, upload, upload, and so on and so forth. So it's really cool and it's completely free. And once you're done with the image, that you want, you would just come and publish, and as long as you are publishing using the card.co URL, then it's completely free. If you want a custom domain, that's a paid for feature, but man, if you don't have money, just use the, the domain they give you, right? But it's really useful. There are other options in this space. I'm sure you might have heard of Linktree. Uh, you may have heard of Direct.me, which, which I use on my social media right now, Direct.me, to create a bunch of pages. They look pretty cool. Look into that if that's something that you're sort of into with, as an entrepreneur or as a working professional or a content creator. There are a bunch of different options in this space, so get into it. The next site that I want to show you is called What Should I Read Next? This is for all the book lovers out there. You've read a book, you're done reading the book, and you're like, I want to read a book that's in the similar genre that gives me more information on this topic or maybe broadens my understanding of some particular thing. So all you have to do is come inside here and sort of type the, the book that you were reading last. And when you, once you click that option, it will give you hundreds of books that are within that genre, which then allows you to find something else to read. So what should I read next? Need I say more? Check it out. All right, the next site that I'm going to show you is called alternativeto.net. And alternativeto is a website that helps you find alternatives to popular websites that are probably not free. For example, Adobe products or things like Canva. So all you do is you come to a site, you're really frustrated, you're trying to use it, but so you come here and for example, you tap Canva. And when you click Canva, it will show you alternatives to Canva here, right here, and then you can go down and it gives you a bunch of options. As you can see, it puts Adobe here as well, and we know Adobe isn't free, but every now and then it gives you a free version, which is like Vector and things like that. So not all hope is lost if you can't use Canva, right? So um, think of any application that you try to use on the internet that costs you money. There's probably an alternative to it somewhere on the internet. Of course, cheap things do cost you. Uh, there's a reason why organizations like Adobe and Canva are very big and powerful is because they've created really nice and clean software that's really easy to use. So if you go down the free route, do expect to encounter some challenges, but hey, it's free if you're willing to put in the time. If that time is worth more to you than paying $50 a year, then go for it. But yes, so there's so many sites like this, but I have to stop here right now. So yeah, those are eight websites that I absolutely think you should check out. If you like this video, smash the like button and share it with anyone that you know. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, then do that right now as well. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.